Welcome to the second episode of Mage Dukata. Ah, I hope you enjoy this too. It's still an integration test. If you're waiting for a real unit test, please uh, wait for the next episode. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 2 of Mage 2 Katas, the plugin config kata. In Magento 2, we have three different ways to intercept methods before, around, and after. For testing the configuration, however, they're all the same. In this episode, we're going to configure a plugin that intercepts calls to methods of the customer repository interface. There is nothing special about this interface. It's just a random class I chose for the purpose of this kata. So to start, we're going to intercept every call, regardless of the scope. And then we'll change our config so the plugin is only triggered in the web API REST scope. And of course, we are going to write tests first, so that when they pass, we know our configuration is correct. So to get started, I'll create the directory for our test first. Let's put it into the directory plugin, and the test will be called customer repository plugin test. This is going to be an integration test because we're testing configuration. Oh, PHP Storm is hanging. Uh, it will recover shortly. Here we go. I like the initial test nothing test to fail. Just to check my execution environment is ready and I'll cut out some of this waiting for the test to complete. And indeed it fails, and for the right reason. Good. Now let's start with the proper test. Test the module intercepts calls to the customer repository. First we'll need the object manager. Object manager get instance. Oh. Imported the wrong one. Uh, this is the one we want. And let's add the proper type hint. Now we need a plugin list instance. A plugin list instance will give us access to any plugin configuration for a given class. I really like using the PHP 5.5 class name constants. And uh, this is the one I want. Now we can get the plugin configuration for the customer repository interface type. Plugin list get customer repository interface. And if there is no configuration for this type, I wanted to return an empty array as a default. And now we can assert same. Now we want the name of the class for the plugin, customer repository plugin. And we want to compare this to a part of the plugin configuration. Now we need to choose an identifier for plugins from our module. And we'll choose vendor name underscore module name, lowercase. For the same reason that we would choose this as a class group in Magento 1, because it has to be unique. And the configured class name will be in a subarray with the key instance. Okay, so we are comparing the configured value against the class name in the current namespace. Now let's run the test. And I expect this test to fail because this module doesn't have any plugin configuration at the moment. And indeed, there is no mage to kata intercept a plugin configuration. An undefined index warning isn't beautiful, but it's a failing test, and that's all I'm after right now. Now, time to add a dixml file, another PHP Storm file template. And we want to create a plugin for the customer repository interface. Plugin name should be made to Carter Interceptor. 
and the plugin class should be customer repository plugin. But I can't copy that by reference yet because the class doesn't exist. If I try it, it just gives me a file with a line number that's kind of boring. So instead I'll use a little trick. Instead we're going to copy the test class by reference and paste that in and just remove the test suffix. And let's remove the leading slash, otherwise we would have to trim it in the test. Oh, and since I have test cleanup disabled, I'll have to remove the test configuration cache. And we are ready to rerun the test and I expect this to work. Good, all green. So currently our plugin config that this test loads is out of the global scope. So it doesn't matter if it's a front-end or an admin HTML or a REST request, our plugin will always be triggered. Let's change this, we want it only to be triggered in the Web API REST scope. To set the scope for an integration test, the test framework provides a Magento app area annotation. This for example would enforce our test to run like during a front-end request. We could try this, but that won't work because the code that handles the Magento App API annotation tries to load the design config and that doesn't exist for the Web API or cron areas. So of course we can fall back to just using code to set the current area that always works. And the code that manages this is the App Area State class. And I'll just look for a test framework here. This is it. And I'd like to alias this class name state to app area state. Just so, add a type hint. And now we can set the area. And the area will be another class constant. This is the right class. And web API rest is the one we need. So, let's rerun the test. I'm pretty certain it will still work because since our plugin is registered in global scope, it will be executed in web API REST requests as well. Yep, test passes. So, let's add a test that checks our plugin is not triggered in the global scope. But first, I want to refactor a little bit because some of this code we will be able to reuse, for example, the creation of the object manager. Let's extract that into a field. Inline this. Add a type hint. And a setup method. So this now can move up here. And this, setting the area code. We'll do that again. Extract that into a temporary var. So now this can go into a method set area. And um, I like to move these utility methods above the setup method. And there's one more thing I would like to extract and that's getting the plugin info. Get customer repository plugin info. And let's move that up. It will always return an array because that's the default value here. Actually an array of arrays. Inline this. And I think we're good. Let's confirm the test still passes, that we didn't break something. And now we're in good shape to write the next test. Test the module does not intercept calls to the customer repository in global scope. Actually, let's rename this one to in web API rest scope. Let's start by setting the execution area to global scope. And now we can assert array has not key. Um, this is what we want. So I'll extract this into a field. Let's say 
module ID. This module ID in this get customer repository plugin info. And this is pretty much it. So this test should fail. Right. It fails because currently our plugin still is registered for the global scope. To make the test pass, we'll have to move the DI XML into a web API REST subdirectory. And let's clear the cache. Rerun the test. And this should pass. Okay, we're good. There's one more thing though that I want to add, which is a teardown method. It's easy to forget. Here I want to reset the area, because otherwise uh, the area reset would leak into other tests. And I don't want my tests to go around polluting the test environment. Otherwise, any area we set using the app state instance, it would persist between tests. And with that, we have completed this kata. Now, if you feel like it, you can either continue to the next episode, the around intercept the kata, where we implement the actual plugin, or you can delete the code so you can repeat this kata. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Uh -huh.